We got six stories to bring you today, and look, this is one of the most jam-packed Prime News episodes of all time. I'll just give you a quick update on what those stories are, and then you can jump to the timestamps down below to get right to it. First off, we have an end-of-year sales update for Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 5 out in Japan, and oh boy, it's pretty impressive for Nintendo. Next up, Nintendo's stock has hit another all time high setting records for nintendo and getting them back to a well valuation that they've never seen before or haven't really seen i suppose in over 13 years or whatever it is 23 years i don't know we'll get to the details in the story beyond all of that we have the number one leaker in the world pioro teasing Game Boy Advance announcements today for NSO. We're going to get into that. Then we also have some brand new details for Mario vs. Donkey Kong. That's right. It's not just that simple HD up res. They did some really cool things we got to dive into with brand new footage. Oh, and last, we have an update on a story I already covered earlier today about the Nintendo Switch 2 release date leaking. And hey, Giving you those clarifying details I couldn't in the last video because it was edited and uploaded and published before these details came out. So hey, I like to keep everyone up to date with the latest and greatest with Switch 2, including updating stories as they develop. That being said, folks, I am Nathaniel Rubblejantz, this is Prime News, and let's get into it. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to talk about is the latest sales data from Famitsu Magazine. And I'm going to link directly to Famitsu down in the comments. But I also want to make sure I feature my good friend, Paul Gale Network, because he used to update my website with all these sales data for me every week. So I just want to give him a shout out. He's a great guy. Uh, Famitsu Sales, these are actually, <laughs> his date's a little wrong up there. It's December 18th through December 31st. There is no 13 month of the year. Anyways, you can see the data there, and it says Nintendo Switch has sold 168,000 units, well, 866 on top of that, for a grand total of 4,062,609 units on the year, with 31,786,656 total switches ever sold in Japan. Remember, this is two weeks worth of data for the first number we gave. For PlayStation 5, over the last two weeks, they sold 81,943 units, moving 2,587,468 units this year for a total of 4,964,857 units. I find this just to be fascinating because just this year alone, Nintendo almost outsold the lifetime sales of PlayStation 5, which has been here since 2020 in Japan. Kind of crazy. It just shows how big Switch is. Anyways, you can look at the top 10 software there as well. Super Mario Bros. Wonder over the last two weeks sold 221,738 units. Momotaro Densaro World, this is also the Switch version, sold 192,620 units. Pikmin 4 up there at 78,589. Dragon Quest Monsters at 77,000, that is the Switch version. Spider-Man 2 on PlayStation 5 moving 53,000. 238 units at number 5. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe moving 46,452 units. Minecraft, this is the Switch version, moving 38,472. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 38,005 units. WarioWare Move It at 37,147 units at number 9. And the final spot in the top 10 is owned by Pokemon Scarlet and Violet at 35,679 units. Now, this is all really cool stuff, and I love sales data clearly nintendo had a very strong year in japan so that's just really exciting in general and look guys switch is just gonna keep on trucking as long as we keep getting software as much as we talk about switch 2 look you bring the games the sales will be there so continue to bring the games and the sales will come nintendo doesn't necessarily have the greatest lineup at the moment for switch could be changing though with a potential february direct on the horizon Next up, we got to get into Nintendo shares because, oh boy, man, Nintendo has hit an all-time high again for their shares as of January 10th. Oh man, this is exciting. So let's go ahead and head on over to Wall Street Journal where they talk about the shares and they go, Nintendo shares hit a record help lifting Japanese stock to another multi-decade high. And this is the overall Nikkei index this is not the nintendo stock so it says japan's benchmark stock index recorded another nearly 
nearly 34 year because obviously we see the peak here back in 1990 anyways a nearly 34 year high on wednesday led by strength in technology shares and a fall in the yen which would boost exporters profits the nikkei stock average rose two percent wednesday to three four 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 one point seven two its highest end of day level since february of 1990 it is inching towards the record high close of 38915.87 hit in December of 1989. Nintendo shares hit a record close high of 7,823 yen or about $54.14. The video game company shares have gained ground since last year, reflecting solid earnings and expectations over the potential launch of a new console to succeed the current Switch model. Now, it's interesting, of course, looking at this because, it, yeah, the essentially investors are expecting a Switch 2. They're very excited about it. Obviously, the Zelda movie's been announced. The Mario movie was a smashing success. Maybe there'll be a, an, another Mario movie announcement this year. They're expecting big things from Nintendo. So the shares are going to continue to climb as we get closer and closer to Nintendo Switch 2's reveal. And then we'll see what happens after it's revealed. If it's received very, very, very well, the shares could explode even higher. Or maybe they'll come down a bit. Look, the stock market is a fluctuating thing. But right now, Nintendo's been like on this upswing the entire Switch generation. And it looks like it's going to continue with Switch 2. Obviously, we have to wait for the system to be unveiled, the games to be unveiled for it, it to actually come out, it to get some explosive sales data. And if that all goes, you know, according to plan, Nintendo is going to be in a very cool position to continue to watch their stock basically set new records every single month for the foreseeable future. But again, we'll have to wait and see what happens because obviously the stock could dip if there's negative reports out there. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, thank you so much to the Wall Street Journal for making sure we're fully up to date on what is going on with Nintendo's stock exchange. Now, next up, we have some rumors surrounding the Nintendo slash Universal Park situation and what's happening, what things are closing down at Universal, and then expansions for Nintendo. We're actually going to get all of this off the gaming leaks in Reddit forum thing majigger subreddit because I found their breakdown to actually be the most informative from multiple sources. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So as you're seeing here, you see rumor Simpsons land at Universal Studios Florida to be replaced with a Pokemon themed land and a potential Luigi's Mansion expansion for Super Nintendo World in Orlando's Epic Universe. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get this full post up. It says Universal Studios debuted their Springfield land in the year of 2008, a decent amount of time before the Fox Disney merger that placed Simpsons characters under the Disney umbrella. This buyout was finalized in the year 2019, and the contract for the Simpsons characters' usage in Universal Studios was only agreed upon for 20 years, expiring in the year 2028. Disney also desires to use Simpson characters in their own parks, according to insiders. So it's likely they will not renew the deal to keep open Springfield and a replacement will be necessary. And this is according to Inside the Magic, which is a Disney insider website. The current prevailing rumor is that Universal will replace Springfield with a Pokemon area where guests can interact with both virtual and real representations of Pokemon. This would allegedly include a virtual reality moving ride similar to the Amazing Spider-Man and Transformers rides. And on this ride, you could use hand gestures to command a starter Pokemon you select at the beginning of the ride to battle for you. The park would additionally sell an interactive Pokeball similar to the Mario wristbands in Nintendo World that you could use to catch and collect unique Pokemon, possibly being able to take them home with you via a phone app. And there is a YouTuber source on this. Now, apparently this is a replacement for both the California and Florida theme parks, not just the Orlando version. Additionally, Luigi's Mansion is rumored to be placed in the expansion pad between the Universal Monsters area and the Nintendo area at Universal's Epic Universe in Orlando. This would likely connect the Universal horror theme classic monsters with the more kid-friendly Nintendo area in the park. This ride would be a moving ride where each guest receive a poltergeist to suck up ghosts as they move through the mansion, with the objective being to catch as many ghosts as possible before the ride ends. And oh man, that Luigi's Mansion ride sounds utterly insane. Guys, obviously this is all rumor stuff, but a lot of the rumors around Nintendo's theme parks have literally all come true, so uh, I think we can maybe you know stash this in the believability bin i'm just excited to see what happens here i've never been to super nintendo world or anything 
And I'm kind of thinking that I might wait till all of my kids are at teenage age. And when that happens, maybe I just take the whole family out. And by that time, maybe we have this, this massive Nintendo park going. Like maybe we have Pokemon and Donkey Kong and obviously Mario and who knows, maybe Zelda, Luigi's Mansion. It could just get utterly insane what they could be doing with these parks. And this just makes me really excited because I actually, despite the fact I don't really live near a lot of theme parks, I actually love theme parks. Uh, if I lived near them, I'd probably be a lot broker than I already am. Next up, we have the only leaker for Nintendo that I'm aware of that has a 100% track record. Speaking up today, his name is Pioro. You've probably heard me talk about him before. He literally leaks all these Nintendo announcements right before Nintendo does it. So it's very easy to quickly verify everything that he says. And here today, he talked about NSO news all the way back in August of 2023, and it said it was going to be N64 stuff, and it happened. And today, he responded to himself and said, Game Boy Advance this time. So what he's saying is, we're going to get Game Boy Advance games announced for Nintendo Switch Online tonight. Now, that's awesome and everything. And to be honest, some people forget that Game Boy Advance is even part of NSO, but yes, it's part of the expansion pack version of NSO. And look, I, I was trying to think about what games they could be announcing, and they usually will make this announcement around 8 p.m. Central Time. And so I went over to the Game Boy Advance website here, and as I was scrolling down, uh, you can see what we have in terms of the included games right now. All this list, the Fire Emblems, the Metroids, the Kirby, the Marios. Uh, and then we have these two coming soon, and these could be the ones that get announced actually today. We could be seeing F-Zero, Maximum Velocity, and Golden Sun being announced. Again, I don't know for sure, but those were previously announced games, so they could be Shadow Drop today. I also came up with a couple of other games I'd like to see. Uh, I just want to be clear, I don't know if these games are happening I just want them, and that includes Metroid Zero Mission and Golden Sun The Lost Age. Like I know the original Golden Sun's already announced, but why not bring Lost Age in? Hey, you already have Metroid Fusion, why not bring in Metroid Zero Mission? They usually like to announce like a three-pack, sometimes a four-pack of games. Maybe all four of them get announced, maybe none of them get announced, and they go with a completely different direction. But it does appear, now again, a rumor, but coming from a 100% track record, pretty believable, that later on tonight, we're going to be getting some Game Boy Advance games added to NSO. Next up, we have to talk about Mario vs. Donkey Kong, one of those GBA ports coming over in full HD in a remake style because they dropped a new trailer today that's actually showing this game as new content. So take a look at the trailer as we go over this. There's going to be two new worlds that were never in the original game. One of them is an amusement park, while the other is actually a snowy mountain theme. There will be a casual difficulty mode added, two-player support, Updates to the bonus stages, so like new content in those stages. And Time Attack mode will be available for every level instead of just some levels. Look, this is the sort of thing we want to see with remakes and remasters and all new content thrown in. It really drives home a reason that if you love the original, you might pick this one up, not just to replay it, but now to play new content. This is the kind of thing that makes me consider picking up the game as somebody who beat this back in the day and doesn't really replay games, why not pick it up so I can enjoy that new content? It's not a super long game in the first place, so it's not like I had to spend 300 hours to get through everything. So we'll have to wait and see if I decide to pick it up, but it's very, very enticing. And you know what? If you'd like to pre-order it, I don't know, maybe there's a link somewhere on screen. YouTube has this thing now where I can like, Link merchandise? I don't, I don't really know if it works, though. And lastly, we have an update to our story earlier today. If you didn't see it, we put out a video saying that, hey, the Nintendo Switch 2 release date had leaked, and this came from what I was claiming was an Altec Lansing press release. And it turns out that while Altec Lansing is involved, it's not technically their press release. They're actually just a licensee. I need to shout out Doctray81, who helped me out big time on Twitter, pointing it out to me just to give me the most up-to-date information I can and correct my report. So here you see Altec Lansing Ventures in the new territory as the inaugural licensee of AI Shark's original gaming software. So the big thing is that they are the first licensee of AI Shark's actual software. They are not the ones that put out the press release. It was AI Shark themselves. Now, AI Shark is actually made up of former Game Shark developers. So that is something I wasn't aware of and is now something I want to bring to your guys' attention because I do think it's really important that we get all this information correct. This story has been evolving all day. Also, I went ahead and put an updated thing on YouTube and I'll probably add in this caveat update as well about 
AI Shark. But let's go ahead and look at my update I put up there because I know not everyone saw it. And it says, as always, I like to keep everyone as up to date as possible. And this is an ever developing story that has had many twists and turns, including the new one I just presented to you guys after dropping the press release when reached out to. AI Shark doubled down on the release timing and even stated Nintendo told them when it's coming out and the name of the system. Of course, as many suspected, this stuff coming out of a major US company, which again, AI Shark's a newer company, so we can kind of disregard that. That's why I got to provide a new update. All of this is to be expected. Nintendo wants to control their own narrative when it comes to this system, especially when it comes to official press releases like this from potential partner companies. In the research done since the video was edited and published, we figured out what AI Shark is. It's like a new controller and some new devices. We got updates as well. But here's a video that I apparently found of AI Shark. I don't know if we're going to get in trouble showing this. I don't know. But here it is, and it's really dim, so I... Don't ask me. The video is being presented as is. Anyways, I just said it's likely that Nintendo of America got a hold of them and yada yada got them to put out a statement through Jason Schreier that they were just making guesses. Of course, why they doubled down before that, I don't understand. And look, I don't know what to do with this news. Maybe it's a bunch of a big nothing burger. Maybe it's not. Obviously, our insiders out there like Nate the Hate and others have been decrying this thing the whole time it's fake it's bullshit why would they have a, a a dev kit blah 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 i don't know i don't think any of us actually know anyone from ai shark but they are apparently former game shark developers and that's where the game shark connection came in even though the press release inferred that like you know game shark was becoming ai shark game shark is still wholly owned by a completely different company known as mad cats so it's not really a replacement for game shark it's just these are people who made game shark should have been better in the press release. Very clickbaity. It is what it is. I'm just providing the updates to you guys as I can because I want to make sure you're as up to date and as knowledgeable about what we're talking about with Switch 2 as I am. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jets from Nintendo Prime, and we'll catch you in the next video.